All right, we have a new chapter of Dr. Stone. This is 124, Invention of Gods and Devils. And here we see a shot of the petrification weapon. The mysterious science tech that turned humanity to stone is ours to take once we provoke the enemy into using it. Now at least we'll team up with the mighty Moes. So go on, play the part of an invader, and beat the enemy soldiers half to death. This is where we left off last chapter. With him in his crazy raiding outfit, mowing down tons of mobs. Here we see this jackal mask wearing guy that I think is one of their chief soldiers. Someone who seems to always be uh, heading up security and stuff, even though he doesn't really have that hunter role that uh, more of the, the people with agency have. So they square off. I feel like Moe's has this one easy. But we'll see. Pretty cool shot. The moon behind them. All of these intricate tree weaving paths around. I love it. I love it. And yeah, he's he's wrecked. <laughs> this good warrior is beyond strong. The great Horashi's miracle power was nothing against him. It's got to be on Moses' level. Hmm. Well. <laughs> what, a, what an accurate assessment. Because he's literally me. That more instance things are better than he realizes. Ah, exaggerate his tail to make himself look better. That's pretty good. I love this tiny little <laughs> summary of, of how he's describing it. That he was chucking gigantic boulders as big as himself, whereas the mysterious warrior was uh, using only magic attacks that there's no way he could have ever won against. And in the back, Kirisame and uh, the really evil guy. Looking a little nonplussed, <laughs> looking uh, maybe slightly skeptical about this whole thing. But they must be aware that something is happening. The story didn't come out of nowhere. Sneaky strategy is simple. The mighty hooded phantom will scare the pants off the enemy with his awesome strength. When the midair battle begins, we'll find a clear area to secretly plant our drone. The hooded army attacks right over there. Most tips them off. The petrification weapon is deployed and yoinked right by the drone. Now, what I would recommend is they don't have absolutely everybody out there in case things go really wrong. Yeah, <laughs> so assuming this all goes smoothly, right? Is the plan ever gone according to plan? <laughs> so, yes, it's. Uh, I'd recommend having some people back in case there is another big petrification wave. So they can de-petrify and recover, and not the entire army get taken out in one strike. So, Suiru brings up, yes, a very good problem. That Mose is bound to be there at the, decide of the, the site of the decisive battle. Hmm. So they'll have to deploy Mose. Because why wouldn't they? The moment our drone grabs the weapon out of the sky, Mose will slaughter us all and steal it back for himself. Yes, quite likely. He has no reason to not, and he's basically said that he will do as much. That was his plan going in. They managed to entice him. They managed to trick him into accepting some level of cooperation. But in the end, he's just wanting to go back to that slaughter plan. Okay, terrifying panel down here, by the way. Moe's totally silhouetted and just... The corpses of our friends flying forward towards the camera. Rough. Rough. For some reason, Yuzuriha, whose face you can't even see, is the most haunting one of all to me. At least they didn't put, like, Suika in here. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Most can't possibly want to hurt Suika. Who could want to hurt Suika? Okay, that's why I'm cooking up an anti Mo's plan. Hmm. So... Keisuke has to make some sacrifices. Of course, they don't have the uh, wealth of materials that they did back at the old home base on this island. They kind of have to make do with just what's convenient for them. They can't even really go out and, and material gather. They can't be risking themselves out there. They made another fidget spinner. Wow. <laughs> Suka loves it. Crafted all these parts like he said, but what's it for? Turning it back to the drone work. 
Mmm, it's the baddest weapon Chrome could imagine. It's like four swords, and they're all kind of different. <laughs> but Senki's got something more clever here. A gun? Is it finally time for a gun? Uh, you know, I've always been pretty happy that for for all of the talk that they've had about gunpowder and, and the power of explosives and stuff, they, they had never actually just made a gun, remember? There was even the big fake-out where they had made that one-shot, uh, <laughs> extremely unreliable, unaimable, self-destructing gun just to scare them. And then when we thought that they would reveal their guns, instead they revealed katanas, which I thought was just so much cooler. So it's not like they're, I don't know, the fact that they took so long to make the gun and, and that it's kind of in this very specific circumstance, it's not like this is their just ideology going forward. I, I think I can respect It's not like a gun worshipping series or whatever. This isn't presented as like the most badass, empowering moment of the entire series. It's just what they have to do in this situation. Yeah, it's gun time. Even prisoners made some DIY style. Whatever was lying around. And powder made from nitric acid, stuffed into these little pipe. And a pachinko ball plugs the hole. Ball. When the gunpowder side goes boom, the ball goes zoom. Easy. And then the gunpowder in our match lock. Alright, mercury based detonator, sure. They've got this tiny little plug that if it's uh, hit with something hard, it'll ignite everything. The pow! Way back at the start, Sanku, Yuzuri, and I had set out for Hakone because we had to resort to this. That was years ago. About three years. Definitely going to hell for this. Damn. Whether man, woman, young, or old, this thing let Homo sapiens conquer the natural world. Invention of gods and devils. The gun. It's gun time. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm very anti-gun. Um, like, I kind of accept the reality of guns. It's not that I, I don't believe they exist. I accept the, the role that they have in many people's lives. But what I rally against is the role that they have in many people's ideologies. That we, we should see guns as this kind of horrible truth we have to accept about the world. Uh, as something that we, we have to just intelligently deal with step by step. But not something to be worshipped. Not something to be fetishized. Not something to be celebrated and... I don't know. I, I just see so much like gun culture type stuff and it just freaks me out. Like it gives me such a, a creepy feeling to know about the, the millions and millions of people that have lost their lives or, or lost loved ones to people wielding these weapons uh, in accordance to their fetishization, in accordance to their eagerness to use them. Which of course comes from this ideology that that makes uh, shooting a gun seem like an exciting thing, seem like something that you you want to find some reason to do. Anyways, I'm sorry, this is all so just a tangent, but I like that the series didn't have guns. I, I thought that was kind of cool, that it wasn't mirroring human development perfectly, but that it was kind of carving out this new path, of a more agreeable path. But when it comes down to it, in certain situations, this is what you need to have. This is what will balance the strength between them and Moe's. They got a gun. There's nothing divine or devilish about a tool like this. It's people who choose how to use it. <laughs> I know you'll tell me to shut up my platitudes. At the end of the day, I really don't want to see anyone die. So if at all possible... Yeah, Yukio... I like this guy. I, I think this guy probably has the same kind of feelings as I do. Now, pacifism is no mere lip service. and It's m more than just about... Ethics. Once people start dying, their friends and family can hold that grudge forever. And we can get their hands on it, so all the more reason not to kill it. It's only logical. All right. Yeah. Well, this makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, it's not so easy to just say, well, putting aside ethics. <laughs> but then it makes the plot a lot simpler if you can say, putting aside ethics, this is just the practical thing we have to do. So, the gun exists, but it will not shoot a person. 
is, is what they're really trying to promise me here. Not just the characters trying to promise each other, but I feel like the author of the series is saying, we're not going to turn into just blasting away at people. We're not going to turn this manga into a gunfight series. Oh, oh look at Yukio's face. It's like, okay. I, I think I can follow you on this. This could kill anyone. It's so slapdash. There isn't even rifling in the barrel. So rifling in the barrel, I'm pretty sure, is about uh, carving a spiral into the barrel of the gun. And that makes the bullet spin as it comes out, and that makes it more stable. It's more likely to fly straight that way. Um, anyways. Given its low power and accuracy, think of it more like a good truck charm for peace of mind. Best case, it'll serve as a tranquilizer gun. Tranquilizer rounds? <laughs> um, <laughs> even if we chip someone of this pea shooter, once we steal the petrification weapon, we can turn him to stone and revive him instantly, fully healed. No different than tranquilizer. Yes, this is definitely mad scientist territory. But I think Senku's total embrace of the healing power of petrification is actually one of my favorite things about this series. So often we have um, something that's kind of established in the premise of the manga, like the petrification weapon, that's sort of just like a higher transcendent power, you know? And no matter how intelligent uh, the characters in the series become, no matter how knowledgeable and crafty, they're still kind of following the rules of the premise. You know, um, like take uh, the Dragon Balls in Dragon Ball. Bulma builds the Dragon Radar. They, they come up with all sorts of ways to, to use the Dragon Balls to benefit themselves. But at the end of the day, they're still totally subservient to the rules of the Dragon Balls. Whereas here, Senkyu is like, oh, this thing actually makes people uh, recover from physical injury and stuff when they're petrified and then depetrified. So <laughs> we're not just going to go back to where humanity was once before. We're going to go back and I'm going to revolutionize the world of medicine. <laughs> I'm going to like cure cancer and all sorts of other things uh, <laughs> by harnessing the power that got us into the mess in the first place. You know, like tearing down at that higher power and saying this is also just a tool for us. This is not something that we bend to the will of, but something that we use. This is something that bends its... What am I trying to say here? It bends to our will. Alright. Not to arouse suspicion, but who will use it? Wielding handguns a tall order for someone inexperienced. Barely anyone in Japan with any experience. Oh, the cop! Yo, the cop. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Wait, did they revive him just now? <laughs> they didn't bother beforehand? <laughs> for a gun to a former cop. Yeah, this guy's definitely a huge asshole in the past. And uh, I think we're going to learn another valuable lesson here. A-C-A-B. Um, but I'm sure they have some sort of scheme to keep him in line. Look at his face. Yeah, no. Look at that. Chrome knows. Chrome doesn't really understand this whole gun thing, but he knows. Dear Yo, strong need for approval makes him the ideal candidate. I think he'll be the easiest to control. Udon is the new world's first ever sheriff. Yeah, okay, so... Yeah, he just needs to be <laughs> much more into the prestige than the power. <laughs> uh, power is no good if you have no one for whom this power is prestigious. What matters is the prestige, even if it's based on an empty power, even if it's based on a power that you have no agency over. Meanwhile, uh, Emerist here is <laughs> forcing herself to blush, trying to, whoa, you and that thing of yours are so cool. She has no idea what it is. <laughs> okay, that is a good face. I like the smaller yo inside of his mouth, cheering. Back when I was a cop, any troublemakers I spotted on the street had the answer to my little friend, Blamo. Yeah, ACAB people. Never lets you down. Okay, he's trying it out. I think this is a spread. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, is this cool? I mean, you can call me out as being hypocritical because it's like I'm a little dismissive of uh, guns being presented as cool. But then earlier, if it's like samurai sword, ooh, that's cool, you know? 
but we, we're not facing a crisis where people take samurai swords into public spaces and just mow down random people on a semi-regular basis, which is a problem that America is facing. People haven't been doing that for hundreds of years with samurai swords, but of course it did happen. There were, there were huge sword massacres back in the day. Um, sometimes state violence was committed via those very swords. So, I don't know. All I can say is that, yes, I am a, I am a slave to the present conditions. I, I only have kind of so much empathetic reach in my history, which I don't think is unreasonable. Like, it's really one thing to have someone who's very close to you that has died as a result of gun violence. Um, versus just knowing in the abstract that descendants of people uh, who had lost loved ones or who had died themselves as the result of a sword, it's different. It is different. That's all I can say is that it is actually just different. So you can call me a hypocrite, but then I will respond by saying, no, it's different. <laughs> and this is how arguments work, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. All right, whatever. He missed the ball. Such sloppy shooting after all that breaking. <gasps> Whoa, but he shotted a venomous snake. A shotted? He shot? Excuse me? How do I speak English? He shot a venomous snake, which is much harder to hit than a bottle. And he did it before anyone even noticed the snake was there. Could this be his cheat code level power? Could this be something he's 10 billion percent good at? I'm actually expecting him, though, to fake out. But he's like, oh, that was an accident. <laughs> okay. Don't pull half until you're actually aiming for the bottles. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's supposed to be like a really shoddy, inaccurate gun. So I kind of like this. That we, we have, you know, what I kind of dreaded. The, like, whoa, badass gun scene. But the guy shooting the gun turned out to be incompetent. And the gun turned out to be pretty bad. <laughs> um, and not bad like Chrome says, but bad as in not good. And, uh, and we'll, we'll just see what comes of this. I don't know. I'm sorry to bog you guys down with all of my, my ramblings, my anti-gun ramblings. But it's, it's a passion. It's a subject I feel pretty passionate about. And uh, it's something that in the past in this manga, I had been like, oh, geez, I hope they don't go in this direction. And now that they finally have, it's not as bad as it could be, for sure. Like, they're definitely kind of giving a more nuanced take on what it means to have a gun, what it means to have this equalization of violent power, what, what it means to bring something like this into the world. It looks like we're not going to shy away from any of those subjects in any sort of major way. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. But I won't be happy until we can go a year without a mass shooting. That's a, such a low bar. But wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> okay, bye-bye.